So basically, in our class today, we are dealing with, uh, of course, our model paper. And uh, our focus will be this concept of our capital allowance. So our focus will be the concept of capital allowance. So looking at uh, capital allowances and uh, the question that I'm saying, this is from our model paper. Believing that all of us, you have access to that model paper. If you go to your model paper, this question number, this question number, could be question number eight. Question number eight, specifically part C, that is uh, what I want us to look at. But remember, as we've always, uh, our approach has always been like, uh, before you look at that, uh, before you look at any question, first of all, you must go through that concept, first of all. So looking at a capital allowance, you should be very aware that uh, we're having a lot of amendments on this. Talk about uh, capital allowances, also known as what? Investment deductions. Investment also known as uh, investment deductions. We understand that uh, there are various amendments which, uh, of course, have been done in relation to capital allowance. These are what allowed us to basically look at in our session today, and also we'll proceed and uh, look at that question. So looking at uh, capital allowances, my good students, the whole idea that should always come at the back of your mind, basically, are just deductions that are granted to investors. In this case, you're having a country, which in this case, basically talk about a Kenya Revenue Authority in our case. They want to basically uh, motivate uh, these investors to continue basically doing what? Investing in our country. So they are going to agree with them that, uh, you know what? On each and every item or fixed item that you purchase, we are going to grant you a deduction. Remember, the whole idea is to assist this investor to literally reduce the amount that he or she is supposed to, to pay as at the end of the day. So here comes whereby we agree that out of every purchase of fixed asset, there's a deduction that you're going to be given. This deduction will assist you to reduce your taxable income as at the end of, as at the end of that period. So that's why we'll be dealing with, uh, or rather, the concept behind the uh, capital allowance or other investment deductions. So for these purposes, for the purpose of this class, basically, you'll find that uh, first of all, you will agree that these are just, just deductions granted on uh, investors on capital investments. So uh, types of capital allowance that we'll be looking at, number one, of course, uh, is uh, one that uh, we all uh, are aware of, basically term it as a uh, just in general, investment deductions, also referred to as a ID. We'll be talking of uh, number two, industrial building deductions. This one you are also, also uh, referred to as IBD. And for IBD, it is a very special, it is a very special component of uh, basically uh, capital allowance. So industry building deduction, Malimu will always term it as, well as Mr. Date. This is Mr. Date. I'm going to give you the reason why we are terming it as Mr. Date. Then I'm having component three, which in this case we are dealing with what? Wear and tear allowances. Wear and tear allowances, which ideally we are referring to this as WTA. The other component here, we normally tend to talk of our farm work deductions being our number for item, farm work deductions. Uh -huh. Talk about uh, the other component here, we normally tend to talk of our shipping investment deductions, shipping investment uh, deductions. We also have another item, number six. We normally refer to this as what? Mining allowances, mining allowances. 
And of course, number seven, term it as what? DIV, diminution in value. Diminution in value. Diminution in value, DIV. So at this point, what we should understand that, uh, yes, there are some amendments more so on this Finance Act 2023, which basically there are some components which have been affected. But what we should have in mind is that uh, these changes as per the Finance Act 2023, these changes are not going to affect us in any exam that we are going to do in 2023. These changes basically will start from 2024. So that is what you should be having. Whichever changes that are going to affect us here, of course, these are the changes that happen in 2022. These are the changes that happen in 2022. These are the changes that are going to, to affect us here. So as much as we are talking about all these components of uh, investment deductions, you'll find that the main items that is always very important, or not all are important, but for the powers of your exams, the commonly tested areas, we normally tend to talk about investment deduction, uh, in IBD, talk about wear and tear allowances, as well as farm work deduction nowadays is also quite common. So these are the four main items that at least by the time you are through with the concept of investment deductions or rather capital allowances, you should be very good on, you should be very good on these items. So after we have uh, listed that, my good students, I want us to dissect starting from the first component, starting from the first component, which is ID. ID, starting from the first component, which is ID, investment deductions. So allow me to erase here. So those are the main components that I will always tend to have. And at the end of the day, you'll find that a capital allowance is always very interesting. It's always very interesting because you'll find that it is also very practical. Whenever you're preparing your books, as at the end of the day, you'll find that you will be required to have the knowledge of capital allowances. So as much as uh, we are doing it, and I know it's a revision time, as much as you're doing it, but also you should approach it with a third eye. Third eye meaning that you should be very keen with it because it is also very, very practical. So starting with the uh, ID, starting with ID. Remember, there are several amendments, by the way, which were done under ID, which as of the end of the day, it should always be expected to have in mind. It should always be expected to have these changes in, in mind. So what is ID, my good students? I want us to put this brief down and say, I want us to put it down very briefly. I'll be giving you in brief, in brief, in brief, in brief, so long as you understand the concept right. So long as you understand the concept right, the aim would be to give you in bits so that at least you have this concept right. So investment deduction, literally you can just mention and say that uh, these are deductions granted to investors. These are deductions granted to investors. These are deductions granted to investors. These are deductions granted to investors in areas of manufacturing in areas of manufacturing, deductions granted to investors in areas of uh, manufacturing. Talk about aspect to do with the uh, hospital buildings. Talk about uh, hospital buildings. Uh -huh. In areas of manufacturing, talk about uh, basically aspect to do with the uh, those who have invested maybe probably in uh, hospital buildings. At this point, we normally tend to talk about aspect of uh, those who have uh, invested in uh, aspect of uh, refineries or uh, in simple term, we are talking of uh, basically, we are talking of uh, petroleum and gas storage facilities. Those investors who have invested in uh, petroleum, 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 and uh, gas, storage facilities, petroleum and gas storage facilities, petroleum and gas storage facilities. Remember these some of the items that are, were, were included. Initially, we didn't have our petroleum and gas storage facilities in that list, but right now we are having that. Also, in relation to the same, those investors who have also invested in what? Hotels, 
that is a hotel building. Hotel building. So we are looking at it in a sense that so long as you're having this investor who has invested in areas of manufacturing, hospital buildings, talk about petroleum and gas storage facilities, and hotel buildings, these investors are going to enjoy the component of a deduction that you're referring to it as well as investment deduction, as investment, as investment deduction, as investment deduction. That should be very, very key for us to be able to, to understand. Now, at this point, before we go ahead, there's a this component which is very important that I want us, first of all, to understand before we go ahead and dissect, looking at the examples of our ID items. So this item under capital allowance, this will cut across all capital allowance. This item that you might refer to as qualifying cost. Okay. Qualifying cost qualifying cost. I want us to basically understand this qualifying cost. QC, QC, qualifying cost. So what is qualifying cost, my good students? Qualifying cost is literally the cost that is going to be subjected for capital allowance. This is what you are referring to it as well, as qualifying cost. The cost that is going to be subjected for capital allowance is what you are referring to as qualifying cost. So you'll find that this qualifying cost will affect all components of capital allowance that is listed. ID, WTA, IBD, farm work deduction, literally is going to affect all through. So long as you're having a cost, this cost that you're going to subject for capital allowance is what you're referring to it as what? As qualifying cost. It is important that you master and understand that step number one, the component of qualifying cost, the cost that is going to be subjected for capital allowance. Now, once we have understand that stage, then let us look at the qualifying cost for ID. Qualifying cost for ID. Qualifying cost for ID. Now the costs that are going to be subjected for capital allowance in the sense of investment deduction. Once you're able to understand qualifying cost, what it entails, it is important that again, we should be able now to look at the qualifying cost for ID. You understand now what a qualifying cost is. The next step is for us to understand the qualifying cost for ID. So qualifying cost for ID number one, my good students last list the following, the one that you've listed here. We are having manufacturing building. Talk about uh, manufacturing, manufacturing building. Uh-huh, manufacturing building. Talk about hospital buildings. Talk about hospital. Uh huh. Hospital buildings. Mm -hmm. We are talking about my good students here. We are talking about hotel buildings. Hotel buildings. Talk about uh, petroleum and gas storage facilities. Petroleum and gas storage facilities. Petroleum and gas storage facilities, petroleum and gas storage facilities. So these are part number one. Talk about manufacturing, buildings, so hospital, talk about hotel, talk about petroleum and gas storage facilities. Uh-huh. Number two, I came, my good students. At this point, you're going to list the aspect of what? Machineries. Machineries that are used in, machineries that I use basically here in manufacturing such as what, talk about machineries used in manufacturing, machineries used in manufacturing, machineries used in manufacturing, machineries used in manufacturing. Mm -hmm. In that case, these machines, my good students will be talking of uh, basically, talk about uh, these are machineries used in manufacturing. Talk about number one, we are talking of a processing machine, processing machines. Mm -hmm. Talk about uh, weighing machines, weighing machines. Talk about uh, basically uh, any machine or rather any machine that is used in uh, manufacturing where we are talking of uh, processing, talk about weighing machines and other machines that are basically fall under the hospital like uh, 
talk about uh, other machines like uh, hospital equipments. Now they are under ID. Talk about uh, hospital equipments here. So the cost of uh, processing machines, weighing machines, talk about hospital machines, and any other machinery that is used directly in manufacturing, that is used directly in manufacturing, and any other machinery that is used directly in, in manufacturing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So after that bit, that should take us to number three item. We are talking of what? Incidental costs. Incidental costs. Incidental, incidental costs. Incidental costs. Associated, associated, associated with the machineries, with the machineries used in manufacturing, with the machineries used in manufacturing. Talk about incidental costs associated with machineries used in manufacturing, uh, hospital equipments. All these items are going to fall, are going to fall as part of what? As part of our ID, as part of our ID as part of our ID, mm -hmm. as part of our ID. Very important to basically uh, note that. Mm -hmm. Then the other key item that is also very vital to understand here, in this case, we normally term them as what? As auxiliary, auxiliary expenses, auxiliary expenses, auxiliary, auxiliary expenses. What are these expenses, my good students? I'm going to explain this in a very, very uh, simple manner. Take, for example, this case. Take, for example, this case. Let me remove this bit, first of all. Take, for example, this case, my good students. You are looking at it in a manufacturing area. You are in a manufacturing industry, or rather, basically, in that company. Then this happens. Assuming, maybe, there's no power. What would be the alternative of power electricity? Assuming electricity may put air. What would be the alternative? Maybe if at all, probably uh, Eunice can tell us. Eunice, uko kwa manufacturing area. Alafu steamers zime put air. Alternative ya kita kwa ni nini? Yes, Eunice. Alternative ya steamer ni nini? Aha. Generator. Generator, right? In this case, steam make it here. Utafanya nini? Utatumia generator. So, generator is part of it. Also, maybe this other case, maybe tunangalia in a sense that uh, maybe uh, maji mepotea kwa kampuni. Kama maji mepotea kwa kampuni, Mary, utatumia alternative ya kita kwa mifanya nini? Mary? Maji mekotia kwa kampuni. Alternative ita kwa ni kufanya nini? Bohol. Utachimba bohol, right? So, utapata like at this point, I'll be having what? I'll be having, I'll be having bohol. I'll be having a uh, bohol. So, you'll find that uh, whatever that I'm using as an alternative, these are what you're referring to in simple term as what? As auxiliary expenses. And in this case, you'll find that here, we'll be talking of such as generators, Talk about uh, generators. Talk about boreholes. Talk about uh, sewage systems. These are sewage systems. Sewage systems. Talk about uh, transformer. We also fall part of with this. Talk about transformers. Talk about uh, basically a uh, water pump. All these are items that we are referring to them as auxiliary expenses. You find that I'm going to use this as an alternative. I was having this, but in the way that I don't have this, therefore I'm going to use this other this other item. Uh huh. That is basically number four. That should also take us to the other component here. That should also tend to check out to this other item. Some of the civil works, some of the civil works in manufacturing area, some of the civil works in manufacturing area, such as what? Talk about uh, basically uh, that is, uh, of course, uh, loading bays, loading and uh, parking bays. 
if at all they are located within our most of course uh loading bay is always in a manufacturing area but parking bay in the event that you are given it is within our manufacturing uh environment then it is going to qualify for is going to qualify for id it's going to qualify for id so about uh, loading uh, talk about uh, parking bays in this case we'll also be talking about uh, number six at this point which is also very important to understand we are having perimeter walls perimeter walls i know majority of the students they normally tend to take perimeter perimeter wall under idd but that is wrong perimeter wall will fall here talk about perimeter or at times refer to as security wall perimeter or security wall perimeter or security wall that will fall there then uh, the other item here number seven basically we can talk of uh, items to do with uh so it will have fall part of our machineries but you can just list it separate conveyor belts conveyor belts conveyor belts so basically, these are some of uh, the items that uh, you should be having them in your fingertips. The qualifying cost for ID. Because right now, I know when Mwalimu is talking about qualifying cost, we know what qualifying cost entails. We know what qualifying cost entails. So basically, these are what you should be having. That's what you should be having. So that's the first stage. You have understood what ID is. You've understood what qualifying cost is. The other case, you've also understood what uh, basically aspect to do with what the items that will qualify for for id now most importantly we go to the rates most importantly we go to the to the rates we go to the rates rates for id talk about rates for id rates for id talk about rates for id hapa ndo maneno iko rates for id rates for id rates for id so You'll find that uh, any time you're talking about uh, race for ID, of course, initially, before the amendments, you are talking of 100% for the items in ID. But under the new rates or whatever rates that are being used now, of course, you know, there are amendments which have been made, but for us, we are basing this with the one that are applicable from 2022. So in this case, we normally tend to talk of uh, the rates for ID normally tend to cover 50% to about 50%. 50%. This is what? 50% in the first year. 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 Then 25% subsequent years. 25% subsequent. 25% subsequent years, 25% subsequent years, 25% subsequent years. That is very important for you to understand that at this point, the first year we are talking of, uh, we are talking of uh, basically the aspect to do with uh, 50%. Then the rest of the period, the rest of the period, we are talking of what? We are talking of 25%. We are talking of 25, we are talking of 25%. That should be very, very important for us to understand. We are talking of 25% the rest of the year. And at this point round, remember, there are several amendments that were done. Initially, it was on reducing balance, but right now we are talking of what? Straight line, right? Straight line basis, straight line basis. Initially, it was on reducing balance, but there's this amendment, of course, that uh, was made. We are doing it at what? A straight line on a straight line basis on a straight line basis on a straight line basis that is very important for us to basically understand straight line basis so this is what Molimu is saying that assuming in this case maybe we have purchased say like an item to do with processing machinery this is an example that i'm giving you assuming you purchase this item processing machinery okay we purchase this item, processing machinery, at a figure of how much? At a figure of one million, for example. Okay. So if you purchase this item at one million, and I want to provide ID, that is to say, in year one, the year that I've purchased, year one, the first year, will be having the one million times fifty percent, which will give us what five hundred thousand. This will be our ID in year one. 
Year two, we are going to take the balance, which in this case, we are talking of the balance here, year two is 500,000. So 500,000, we are going to provide this at the rate of 25% on straight line basis, 25% on straight line basis all through, 25% on straight line basis all through. So year three would be 500,000, right? Times 25% up to whichever year that you're looking at. So that's why you're seeing for this case, you're five, uh, we are noting that uh, the first year we are providing this, uh, we are providing a year at the rate of 50%. Subsequent years on the balance, I'll be providing it at 25% on straight line basis. Straight line, straight line basis, straight line basis, straight line basis. Because remember, like uh, this, what happened in 2021. Basically, we are doing this on reducing balance. So the students who are being tested in 2022, they were using all through reducing balance. That is to say, whichever amount that I was having, basically the balance, I was using it on reducing balance. But here came basically 2022. In this case, it was taken to straight line basis, the balance, straight line basis. So what is happening now, you guys who are going to do exams in 2023, you are going to use basically for amendments in 2022, which literally is now straight line, straight line basis. So that's why I normally tend to advise, you'll find a student using more so for tax. This student will use what? The notes for, <laughs> this student will use the notes for 2021. 2021, this student at a summer reducing balance. Without knowing that again, items were changed, they are supposed to be on straight line basis. Tax is not complicated. Tax is basically how good are you updated? That's, that is tax. How good are you? How good are you updated? So you'll find that, yes, the notes are not bad. This student is very innocent. He has gotten the notes from whichever source that he has gotten the notes. Basically, he has a very good notes for 2021. But you'll find that 2021, is going to study no sweet reducing balance basis. But come the exam that he's doing, probably in his mind, he had said that we are doing reducing balance. But in reality, the amendments which are supposed to do it with straight line basis. So that's why it's always very important for you to always make sure that you have updated notes, or even if you don't have updated notes, at least try to follow the updates when it comes to matters to do with tax. In that case, you'll be in a very, very good position. So we are talking of what? We are talking of straight line basis, the balance. We are talking of straight line basis, the balance. Once we have that case, there is very key item. There is a very key item in ID, which I want us to look at it. There is a very key item in ID, which Molim would want to summarize it here. And in this case, we can have it as an NB. We can have it as an NB. We can have it as an NB, which is very important. Talk about what? 10% test. 10% test. 10% test. A very key component in investment deduction. A very key component in investment deduction. That is, uh, we are referring to that as what? As 10% test. Uh -huh. So one will ask, Molimu, what is this 10% test? What is this 10% test? One will ask, Molimu, what is this 10% test? So this is a concept, my good students, that I want you to basically grasp this very, very well. I want to grasp this very, very well, so that even if you get a chance, you can literally guide your colleague or your friend who doesn't know about 10% test in ID. So 10% test will apply in a sense that we are looking at some items, some items which are included in the factory building. So for us to qualify them for ID, we have to conduct this 10% test. And these items basically, don't write first of all, I'm going to give you what you're going to write. So these items basically, we normally refer to them as what? As non-qualifying items. Non-qualifying items, non-qualifying items, non-qualifying items in ID. So, in this sense, you'll find that, yeah, I'm having these items basically which are included 
I'm having these items which are included as part of our factory building. But for them to qualify for ID, I have to make sure that they have passed this 10% test. And the items that we normally tend to look at here, basically, we normally have these items, items of showroom, items of showroom, items of admin block here, talk about admin block. Admin block is uh, what you are referring to it, of course, as a, as a, as a offices. Talk about uh, another item here, another item we are talking of a retail shop. And uh, of course, a uh, dwelling place. These are the four items that we normally refer to them as what? As non-qualifying items, as non-qualifying items, non-qualifying items, non-qualifying items. So you'll find that uh, a lot of conduct, if at all these items are included as part of our factory building, then you'll have to conduct these tests that you're referring to as 10% test. So under this, briefly, I want us to mention or write something and say that uh, these tests apply, 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 where non-qualifying items are included, these tests apply, where non-qualifying items are included, these tests apply, where non-qualifying items are included. When you are talking of non-qualifying items, my users, you're talking of what? These items. You're talking of these items. You're talking of these items that we listed here. So you're saying that this test applies when non-qualifying items, when non-qualifying items are included, when non-qualifying items are included in the cost of the factory building. This test conducted when the non-qualifying items and the non-qualifying items, these are what we are, we are saying. Dwelling place, retail shop, showroom, admin block when they are included in the cost of the factory building, 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 full stop. Under dash, you can even say, if the total cost of these items, 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 if the total cost of these items are more than 10%, are more than 10%, are more than 10%, are more than 10% of the cost of the factory building, if the total cost of these items are more than 10%, are more than 10%, are more than 10%, are more than 10%, of the cost of the factory building, of the cost of the factory building, of the cost of the factory building, then they will not qualify. Then they will not qualify. Then they will not qualify for ID. They will not qualify for ID. Then they will not qualify for ID. They will not qualify for ID. They will not qualify for ID. But if 10% and less, listen to that very careful, but if 10% and less, meaning that 10% is included, but if 10% and less, but if 10% and less, then they will qualify for ID. Then they will qualify for ID. Then they will qualify for ID. Then they'll qualify for ID. Then they'll qualify for ID. So, in this sense, we are looking at it in this perspective, my good students, that whenever we are conducting this 10% test, allow to establish the percentage component of these items in our factory building. We say, if at all I am doing this test and I have realized that the cost of these items are 10% and more they will not qualify for ID. And when you are saying that they will not qualify for ID, that is to say, they'll have to be deducted. 
they'll have to be deducted from this cost of the factory building. But if at all we found out that this total cost is 10% and below, then we are saying that they are going to qualify for ID. They are going to qualify for ID. And if they are to qualify for ID, that is to say, we are not going to remove them from the cost of our factory building. We are not going to, re to remove them from the cost of our factory building. That is very important to note. Then one key item that again we must list here, because I normally realize that this is always a challenge to the students. Another item, we can have the last dash on that in C. Mm -hmm. If these costs are given separately, if these costs, you're here of which cost? The non qualifying items. If these costs are given separately, if these costs are given separately, they will qualify for IBD. If these costs are given separately, they will qualify for IBD. If these costs are given separately, they will qualify for IBD. They will qualify for IBD. But if they were deducted, but if they were deducted in the factory building item, but if they were deducted, but if they were deducted in the factory building, but if they were deducted in the factory building, they will not qualify anywhere else they will not qualify anywhere else if they were deducted if they were deducted the factory building they will not qualify anywhere else they will not qualify anywhere else that is to say my good students if at all when you are doing your 10 percent test and you realize that these costs items were more than 10 percent of the factory building then you deducted this cost in the factory building they will not appear anywhere else. They will not appear anywhere else. They will not appear anywhere else. That is something that you should always be having at your fingertips. So for us to make sure that this concept has sync very well, I want us to have a very simple illustration question here. I want us to have a very, very simple illustration at this point. I want us to have a very, very simple illustration. So at least you guys, you must be having this well and very well. So this is what you're doing. Let us have this illustration question. A very simple illustration question. Mm -hmm. We can often say that M. Rasa provided the following details. 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 The following details. M. Rasa provided the following details. For the year ended, for the year ended, for the year ended, for the year ended, 31st December 2022. For the year ended 31st December 2022. M. Rasa provided the following details for the year ended 31st December 2022. Mm -hmm. So these are the details, number one here. Factory building was constructed factory building was constructed factory building was constructed factory building was constructed at a cost of at a cost of 10 million shillings at a cost of 10 million shillings factory building was constructed at a cost of uh, 10 million shillings Comma, included in the factory building was included in the factory building, included in the factory building. Allow me to use FB, not Facebook, but FB, factory building. Included in the factory building was the cost of, was the cost of showroom. The cost of showroom, uh, this amounted to a figure of uh, 1 million talk about uh, the cost of showroom and uh, admin block the cost of showroom and admin block the cost of showroom 100 mi uh, 1 million and admin block and admin block uh, 
and that mean block given a figure of uh, 800,000 shillings. 800,000 shillings. Uh -huh. Number two. During the year, the following items are purchased. During the year, during the year, the following items are purchased during the year. The following items were purchased during the year. The following items, the following items were purchased or purchased during the year. The following items were purchased. And uh, at this point, you are talking of what? Say uh, processing machinery. Processing machinery. Processing machinery. A figure of five hundred thousand. Talk about uh, generator. Generator. We're having a figure of say like uh, maybe three hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. Generator figure of three hundred thousand shillings. Then you're given uh, installation cost of processing machinery. Installation cost. Installation cost of uh, processing machinery. Installation cost of processing machinery. You're given a figure of uh, four hundred thousand. Installation cost of processing machinery. You're given a figure of four hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. Required here. Required. 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 Compute the capital allowances due. Compute the capital allowances due that is required after you're done with that. Mm -hmm. Required. Compute the capital allowances due. Compute the capital allowances due for MDA Rasa Limited. Compute the capital allowances due for MDA Rasa Limited for the year ended 31st December 2022. Compute the capital allowances due for MDA Rasa Limited. For the year ended 31st December 2022. For the year ended 31st December 2022. Uh-huh. Compute the capital allowances due for MDRASA Limited. That is for the year ended 31st December 2022. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. On that point, Rose, can you give me a non qualifying item. Do you have an unqualifying item in the factory building? Rose? Yeah. If you analyze our factory building, are we seeing the non qualifying items? Yes. Which are? Showroom. Mm -hmm. And admin block. And admin block. So, what are we supposed to do? Yes, we're supposed first to compute the we're first of all we're supposed to compute 10 percent of the total cost of the building then uh -huh. we add the cost of showroom and add the main block uh -huh. then see whether the cost of the showroom and main block is more or less of the 10 percent of the factory building uh-huh very good very good so ideally what rose is telling us rose is telling us that we're supposed to do what a 10 percent test so the first procedure is for us to conduct our 10% test. That's the first stage. The moment you have realized that you are having non-qualifying items in the factory building, then you have to do the 10% test. So this 10% test is how we're going to do it. This is how we're going to do it. We have the cost of the factory building. We have the cost of the factory building, FB. The cost of the factory building, we're having a figure of how much? 10 million. That is the cost. The cost is 10 million. The cost of the factory building is 10 million. So at this point, let us identify, or we have already identified the cost of non-qualifying items. Non-qualifying items at this point, the non-qualifying items, non-qualifying items, I'm having the showroom, our showroom is going for how much? Our showroom is going for 1 million. Then we have our admin block. Admin block is going for 800,000. 
So that is to say the total cost of this item, we're having 1.8. So we need to do that percentage test. So the total cost of these items are 1.8. The cost of the factory building was 10 million. So in this case, we'll be having more percentage. So you're going to divide by 10 million here. You're going to divide by 10 million times 100 there. 10 million times 100, just a moment here. 10 million times 100. Uh -huh. See for you're getting what percentage? See for you're getting what percentage? You can just unmute and tell us what percentage you're getting. I'm a Janet at Wambie. Janet, you're getting what percentage? Yeah? You're getting what percentage, Amini? You're having 1.8, right? Divide 18, by... Eight. What, what percentage? 18%. 18? Yes. So I'm having 18%. So, Janet is giving us 18%. So, if it is 18%, this clearly shows that the total cost of these items are more than 10% of a factory building. Therefore, what you are supposed to do is to do what? Is to deduct. So, I'm going to deduct this cost because they are more than 10%. So, I'm going to deduct 1.8 here. So that the qualifying cost, the qualifying cost for factory building, the qualifying cost for factory building, I'll be having my 10 million. In this case, we left 1.8. I should be having a figure of 8.2. So therefore, my qualifying cost here, I should be having 8.2. This is the qualifying cost now for the factory building. Qualifying cost for factory building, I should be having 8.2. So once I have deducted these items, they will not appear anywhere else. Once I have deducted those items there, they will not appear anywhere else. They are not going to appear anywhere else. So that's the first procedure. Then the question would be, what if, right? What if this cost of ours were 10%? Assuming our cost here, we came, or uh, rather, our uh, similar cost out here, maybe we had seen like uh, exactly 10%, which in this case, assuming it was exactly 10%. If it was exactly 10%, that is to say, they will qualify for ID. And by the virtue of that qualification, we couldn't have deducted anything there. The qualifying cost of this factory building will have remained to be what? 10 million. Or in the other event, if assuming this cost was what? 9%. 9% that is less than 10. That is also to say I couldn't have deducted that cost there. In Gebaki Tungapi, the 10 million, the original amount, we couldn't have deducted that. So that is the concept of 10%. That's the concept of 10%. Now, our question will not end there. Our question will not end there. So we will have basically to determine now our qualifying, uh, or rather our, our capital allowance. In this case, we're talking about IBD. So how are we going to go about it, my dear students? I'm having my IBD here. Our IBD, or rather our ID, sorry, we're having our ID. So our ID, I'm going to have the nature, this is a format, nature of the asset, nature of the asset, balance broke down. First year, we are talking of ID 50%. Then you are talking of what? Uh, first of all, before balance broke down, have qualifying cost, kindly. Before balance broke down, have qualifying cost to guide us so that uh, I want to break it down very uh, to the last detail, have qualifying cost, then have balance brought down, then have ID here, 
so that you understand how we'll arrive at the balance carried down. Then you're having what? Balance carried down at this point. Balance carried down. So this is the format. This is the format for what? This is the format of computing ID. This is the format, the best format that you can use to compute ID. So this is what you're having. The first asset, I'm having the FAPSI building. FAPSI building, we have determined our qualifying cost to be 8.2. So we have determined our qualifying cost here to be 8.2. We didn't have any balance put down. Remember, we are looking at year one. So year one, therefore, 50%. Year one, I should be talking of 8.2 times 0.5. That should give us 4.1. That is to say my balance carried down with what? 4.1. Proceed to another item here. I'm having processing machinery. I want a good student to tell me what would be the cost of processing machinery in this case. I want a good student to tell me the cost of processing machinery. Smith go. I need to ask Smith go. Smith go, what would be the cost of your processing machinery? Smith go, what will be the cost of our processing machinery in this case? Tuone kama watu wanaelewa. Smith go ajongea, sifa ajongea, and watu wengi sana hapa naona. I don't know if uh, if at all is uh, muting the challenge or us. Uh, I'm not sure why they are not uh, unmuting themselves. Ross. Summarize for us there, what will be our cost of processing machinery? Uh, I think it's 500,000. Nimekata, the qualifying cost, nimekata, molimo mekata hiyo. Mary? Yes, Mary? Qualifying cost is going in gaps. One million two hundred. One million two hundred. Two hundred. For processing machinery. Yes. Yo molimo mekata, 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 mekata kata kata. So this is what is happening. Processing machinery is five hundred thousand. Then we had installation cost of processing machinery. Installation cost, this is an incidental cost. This is an incidental cost to that processing machinery. So if I want to determine my qualifying cost for processing machinery, this will be simple. I'm going to take the 500,000. We add the incidental, which is 400,000. Give us what? 900,000. So therefore, very confidently, I'm going to take... 900,000 there, balance group down we don't have. Balance group down we don't have. And in this case, by 50%, by 50%, I should be having what? For 50, 450, 450,000. 450,000. Lastly, I'm having generator. So generator here, I should be talking of 300,000. I'm having 150,000 because it is 50%. The balance carried down on 50,000. So my focus basically is on these items. ID, ID, my focus is on ID. So that is of course uh, 4.1 million. So I'm having this is a uh, 4.1. Let, let us have it in full. So I'm having 4.1 plus 450 plus 150. This should give us a figure of 4.7. So therefore, my ID, very confidently, I'm going to have 4.7, 4.7, 4.7. A very simple illustration of what ID entails. A very simple illustration of what ID entails. So that point, guys, any question? Any question before we proceed to the second item, which is IDD? Any question? Uh-huh. Uh huh. Masi, we are saying 900,000. Masi, I've seen you've texted, you've chatted on uh, the wall. We're saying that processing machinery, I'm having the cost, which was 500,000. Then we add the incidental cost. You see the incidental cost? The incidental cost is 400,000. And if you can check your notes, 
where we listed the aspect to do with the incidental cost to be part of our qualifying items or rather qualifying cost. So therefore, to get the total cost, before we started using this machinery, the cost would be the purchase cost, which is 500,000, plus the incidental cost of installation, which is 400. That's why you are getting 900,000. That's why you are getting the 900,000. That's why you're getting the 900,000. So I believe that is, that is okay now. Mercy, believing that uh, you've gotten that concept right? Believing that yes, Mercy gotten that concept right? Is that okay? Yes, Mwalimu. Great. So uh, once we have that in mind, then we should proceed to the next item. The next item, basically here, we are talking of what? IBD, Mr. Ditch, Industrial Building Deduction. Industrial Building Deduction, IBD, also known as what? Mr. Ditch. So we are having IBD. IBD, Industrial Building Deduction. Industrial Building deductions. I normally refer to IBD as Mr. Date, and I'm going to give the reason why I normally term this as well as Mr. Date. Mr. Date, Mr. Date. I'm going to give the reason why we are normally, or rather we normally term this as well as Mr. Date. Uh-huh. So on this case, anytime you're talking of IBD, anytime you're talking of IBD, what should you be able to understand? These are deductions granted to investors. 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 On investment on items like, on investment on items, on investment on buildings actually, on investment on buildings, on investment on buildings, on investment on buildings, such as number one, talk about what you normally refer to as these are talk about a warehouse or go down, warehouse slash go down. Mm -hmm. Talk about number two here. We have talking talk about labor quarters here, labor quarters or also refer to this as what? Excuse, excuse basically they are staff quarters, staff quarters, staff quarters, uh-huh. Number three, here, number three, talk about aspect to do with now the items that ideally, if uh, they were given separate, such as what, showroom, Right. Talk about aspect to do with the canteen. Right. Talk about aspect. This canteen is the same as a retail shop. Canteen is the same as a retail shop. Mm -hmm. Canteen is the same as a retail shop. Talk about admin block. Admin block. Admin block, basically, you can also term it as well as offices. Offices, you can be given in that context, like offices. Talk about the dwelling areas. This can be caretaker's dwelling areas. Dwelling place. Mm -hmm. So these are items that, of course, will be part of that. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. The other item, of course, you can also include at that point. Uh, talk about, we can also be able to uh, talk about aspect to do with the uh, educational buildings. We're having educational buildings in this list. We're having educational buildings. Educational buildings. Mm -hmm. Educational buildings, educational buildings. Uh huh. That is uh, that. Of course, will uh, will uh, form part of uh, will form part of uh, this uh, case. Talk about uh, sporting 
facilities or area. Sporting facilities or area that will also be part of uh, part of industrial buildings. Mm -hmm. So these are some, but just uh, items that are the qualifying cost for IBD. These are some of the qualifying costs for IBD, which as at the end of the day, we must be very good at, which as at the end of the day, we must be very good at. Now, on this case, remember, like initially, initially, we were talking of uh, commercial buildings and uncommercial buildings, but under this new regime, under this new regime, basically, we will be talking of what? All items are treated as industrial buildings, regardless of if it is commercial or non-commercial, and be having the same rate. So therefore, this should take us to the rate of IBD. That should take us to the rate of IBD, rate for IBD, rate for IBD. Currently, the rate for IBD stands at 10%, 10%. 10%, 10%, this is on a straight line basis. 10% on a straight line basis. 10% on straight line basis. 10% on straight line basis. 10% on straight line basis. Very important. 10% on straight line basis. 10% on straight line basis. Uh -huh. Make sure that you have that. 10% on straight line basis. 10% on state line basis. Basically, this 10% is per annum. Remember, we are talking of per annum. That is a 10% per annum on a straight line basis. Uh -huh. This should take us to this concept that Monimo is referring to as Mr. Date. This will take us to this concept that Monimo is referring to as Mr. Date. Why is Monimo referring to this concept of IBD as Mr. Date? This is the reason, my good students. Why is Monimo? Referring to this concept of IBD as Mr. Date. Uh -huh. So that you should always know anytime you are having IBD, what should come at the back of your mind is the concept of Mr. Date. Why is Molimo referring to this as Mr. Date? This is the reason. We can have it as an NB. We can have it as an NB. The reason why Molimo is referring to IBD as Mr. Date. Mm -hmm. So we can basically note and say this deduction is granted. This deduction is granted. This deduction is granted. Which deduction? IBD. This deduction is granted proportionally. Proportionally, this deduction is granted proportionally as per the usage of the asset. This deduction is granted proportionally. This deduction is granted proportionally as the usage of, as per the usage of the asset, 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 as per the usage of the asset. And this is why, or rather, this is a reason so that you should be able to understand it clearly. Assuming, take for example, this case. This warehouse was constructed. 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 Maybe uh, on uh, 1st July, on 1st July 2022, at a cost of 2 million. The warehouse was constructed on 1st July 2022 at a cost of 2 million, at a cost of 2 million, at a cost of 2 million. And the financial year of this company is ending on 31st December. The financial year of this company is ending on 31st December 2022. So in this case, if I was to provide for capital allowance for this item, this will be simple, my good students. How? We are going to take 10% times the cost, which is 2 million. I'm going to ask myself, for how long has this asset been 
in usage? For how long has this asset been in usage? In this case, we can clearly see it was constructed on 1st July 2022. So ideally, we are talking of how many months? Six months. So therefore, I'm going to have times six over 12, which would give us what? Our IBD. If at all, this I set was constructed, or rather this warehouse was constructed on 1st November. If this warehouse was constructed on 1st November, again, we have to consider it as a twin it was, as a twin or rather period of usage. Like in this case, I'd be having 10% times 2 million times how many months? November, December, 2 over 12. You see? The concept of Mr. Date. The deduction is provided proportionately as per the usage of the asset. The concept of Mr. Date. The concept of Mr. Date. We are providing this asset as a twin. It was used in the farm. And that's why Molimu is referring to IBD as Mr. Date. That's why Molimu is referring to IBD as Mr. Date. So make sure that you have that in mind very, very well. You have that in mind very, very well. Mm -hmm. Any question on that kindly before we proceed to WTA? Today, I want us to do the summary of these three main items. I want us to do the summary of these three main items so that whenever you see these items in your exams, you just be laughing, you just be smiling, right? You just be smiling, you just be smiling. Uh huh, uh huh. Any question? Any question? Before we proceed, uh -huh. if we don't have any question, it means that basically you're getting the concept right. So we proceed to the next. Yes, please. Now, yes, have, Daniel. now when it comes to the industrial uh, machinery, investment deductions. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Now, the building, uh -huh. there was a question that I was angry. Uh, uh -huh. And now the Nini was included, let's say the admin offices. Uh huh. They were included, but now the 10% the qualifying cost was not there. So what they did in that question, uh -huh. they left and uh, said the factory building, and then they came up with the admin, with the admin offices. How should we go about that one? Because the uh, Waliye Kalakini separately. I'd stated that, right? When you're given separately, they will qualify for IBD. Then you will get easy class where you see you're Oh, love don't mean yes, easy. So we say that, uh, and I've stated that one. We say that uh, in the event that you're given these items separately, they are going to qualify for IBD. Okay? If you are given separately, if they are not included as part of the factory building, they are going to be treated separately. You're going to take them as you're going to take them under IBD. Is that correct? Is that okay, Dan? Like that would mean if you're given separately, Peleka, IBD. Okay? Bona Daniel, I hope on that case, we may have a Yeah, I'm okay, Malimu. Great. So that case should take us to this other element, where and tear allowance. Maneno Mahali, Changes Zico, WTA. So, talking of WTA, Mister. yes, please, favor. Oh, okay. You said that when you deduct them, when you deduct them, you don't include them in IBD. Is it, that, is it so? Exactly. When they are deducted, when they were part of an unqualifying item, right? And you deducted them in ID, they will not qualify anywhere else. But if you are given separate, if you are given separate completely, that is when you are going to take it under IBD. Favor? Yeah, thanks. Great. Is that okay now? Yeah, sure. Great. So in that case, we go to WTA, where entire allowance. WTA. Where and tear allowance, where and tear allowance. Sapando Mahali Maneno Eco WTA. So WTA is simple. 
And why is Molimu saying that WTA is sinful? At this point, you are looking at uh, deductions granted to all other machineries which are not in ID or items that are not in IBD. All these other items or rather assets that we normally tend to use in our business that supports our operation, you'll find that they will qualify for WTA. So WTA is simply deductions granted, deductions granted, deductions granted on investment of other machineries and equipments deductions granted on investment of other machineries and equipments deductions granted on investment of other machineries and equipments just a moment here deductions granted on investment of other machineries and equipments other machineries and equipments uh huh. I'm changing my battery in a few. That should be okay. Mm -hmm. So we are saying that uh, deductions granted on investment of other machineries and equipments and equipments and equipments. So here, WTA, we have classes. Machineries and equipments are classified into classes. Are classified are classified into classes machineries and equipments are classified into classes and currently we only have two classes currently we only have two classes i know initially or maybe the books that we've been using <laughs> is gonna four classes no currently we're having only two classes for wta in this case we have class a which is 25% and class B, which is 10%. For WTA, currently we are talking of only two classes. Class A, aspect to do with 25% and class B, 10%. You know what times I normally tend to tell my students, I know we are on revision, but allow me to show you this. If you check your, basically, uh, whenever you're filing your returns, that is uh, now practically, you realize that some of these items, literally, they're just updated just for you to, to check. I want to show you something here. Let me see if I can uh, get, uh, basically, uh, IT2. Let me show you IT2. IT2, basically, is uh, what you normally tend to use in filing your returns. That is uh, the file that uh, whenever you're filing a return of a company, we normally tend to use IT, IT2. We normally tend to use what you're referring to as IT2. So in your IT2, check this one out, your IT2. You know, at times it's also very good to at times look at these items uh, practically so that at least you have, uh, you have that knowledge. So um, I want to share this, uh, let me just share this, so that you also have a practical touch and experience of that. These are IT2, these are IT2, I've shared it there. Literally now, the one that is used for KRA practically, the one that is used for KRA practically. Later on, when you guys, you are done probably with uh, your exams, you can always consider also, uh, maybe considering attending these practical classes, they are always very, very important. I believe you're able to see this IT2. So this is a wear and tear deductions. These are wear and tear deductions. Whereby you can see, like practically, we only have where we see, where you can see white, that is an item where you can basically edit. The gray part, you can't literally do anything in relation to that. So in this case, we can see that currently, whenever you're talking of WTA, we are talking of only two classes, class A, which is 25%, and class B, which is 10%. Only two classes, only two classes is the one that you normally tend to talk about, only two classes. So basically, that is a what we should always be having in mind. And literally, you can see it practically here. Aspect of class one, class A, or class A and class, class A and class B plus A and plus B. So very important for you to basically have that in mind so that uh, 
whenever you're having a touch of this experience, you'll find that uh, it's always very good. It's always very good. It's always very good. And uh, what I've shown you basically that was, uh, check this one out. I'll also check, uh, there's something here very important that I want you to note. There's something very important here that I want you to note. This, this I think this was uh, for, this was data for 2021. You can also check current. You can see here for 2021, observe this case. You see, we are dealing with reducing balance basis. That was as at 2021. And that's why I'm telling you guys that for 2021, we were using reducing balance. But here comes basically 2022. 2022 basically, everything was amended where we are dealing with what? Straight line, straight line basis. This was literally for 2021, where you can clearly see I'm having reducing balance basis. But for 2022, actually, right now, we are dealing with what? Straight line basis. At times, it's also very good to show you guys these things practical so that you should get that feeling that whatever that you're doing in class now is exactly the same knowledge that you're going to apply, that you're going to apply, that you're going to apply in the field. So let us analyze class, class uh, A item. Let us analyze class A item. Let us analyze class A, class A, which you're talking of E to B, 25%. Okay? So, I'll give you a secret. Rather than you basically, <laughs> if I can use the word crummy, all these items for class A, no, don't do that. Just have the characteristics of these items. If you have the characteristics of items in class A, it will be very, very easy for you. And also in summary, by the way, you see the items in class A are what you used to have in class, the previous class one, class two, and class three item. What used to be previously in class one, class two, and class three. Whatever that I'm having in class B is what used to be in class four, in special class, except for except for software, because software now software now it is under class A. So all items that you used to have in class four and a special class, except for software, except for software, these are now items that you qualify in class B. These are now the items that you qualify in class in class B. So talk of class A. Let us understand the characteristics of class A items. Let us understand the characteristics of class A items. What do these items include here, my good students? Characteristics of class A items. Characteristics of class A items. Uh -huh. So the first characteristics here, we can talk of light and heavy at moving machineries. Light and heavy at moving, light and heavy at moving machineries and equipment. Light and heavy at moving machineries and equipment. Light and heavy at moving machineries and equipment. Uh -huh. Number two item, we can talk of self-propelling. Self-propelling, self-propelling, self-propelling machineries and equipment. Self-propelling machineries and equipment. Self-propelling machineries and equipment. So number one characteristics you're talking of, they should be at least light and heavy at moving machineries and equipment. The other characteristic here, we are talking of what basically item to do with uh, self-propelling machineries. Then number three, we are talking of office electronic. Office electronic, office electronics, machineries and equipment. Office electronic equipment. Office electronic. The keyword is electronic. Office electronic equipment. Office electronic equipment. Office electronic equipment. Office electronic equipment. That is what you're talking about. Office electronic equipment. So 
Once you have these characteristics, my good students will find that if at all we were to list them, we can list as many as we can. Starting with what? Number one item here, maybe if at all you were to have an example, but I'll share, I'll share this doc for, for, for the examples of uh, examples of our class A items. We have so many items, but we're just going to mention a few. Number one, talk about, uh, that is, uh, of course, we can talk about, uh, uh, that is uh, lorries, talk about lorries, talk about aspect of uh, forklifts, lorries, talk about forklifts, right? Talk about uh, motor vehicles, these are normal motor vehicles, both heavy and light, right? You can talk about computers, you can talk about computers, one item that I must mention, we have com under computers, we are talking of both hardwares and softwares, because also computer softwares right now, they are under class A. Computer softwares are now under class A. So really about uh, computer softwares and hardwares, right? We are talking about uh, ETR machines, but the beauty part now, now we are talking about what ETIMS, right? Now we are talking about ETIMS. ETIMS is basically a software. So we're talking about uh, ETR machines, right? Uh, and so many other items. We just listed a few. We have so many, so many, so many items here. Allow Mwalimu to share with us, basically. I'm having a doc which I'm going to share. It has all items there. So long as I normally tend to guide my students, so long as you basically know the characteristics of these items, at least it will be very easy for you to analyze the other ones very easily. So these are what you need to, to know. Mm -hmm. Then there's one key item here before maybe we proceed to uh, class, uh, class four. There's a very key item under these classes before we proceed to class four. Under class A, or rather before we proceed to class B, not class four, but before we proceed to class B, there's a key item here under class A. This item basically, it is always tested many a times whenever you're dealing with capital allowances more so at this level. And this is a concept to do with commercial and non-commercial telephone. Commercial, so we can just have it as an NB. As an NB, we have commercial and non-commercial vehicles, okay? Commercial and non-commercial vehicles. Commercial and non-commercial vehicles. Commercial and non-commercial vehicles. Commercial and non-commercial vehicles. Mm -hmm. So commercial, it will be very easy. Anytime you're talking of commercial vehicle, basically, this is a vehicle that is used to generate income directly to the business. This is what you're referring to as commercial vehicle. A vehicle that is used to generate income directly to the business. That's what you're referring to as non-commercial or other commercial vehicle. Non-commercial vehicle, my good students, and that's where our focus will be. Our focus will be on non-commercial vehicle. Non-commercial vehicles, basically, these are vehicles that support operations within the business. Vehicles that support operations within the business, but not they are not uh, directly used to generate income. They just support what? They just support operations within our business. So these are vehicles that support operations within, within the business. And anytime we are talking of non-commercial vehicles, you will find that there is component that you normally refer to as what? Restricted value. Restricted value. This item that you normally refer to as what? Restricted value. This item that you normally refer to as restricted value. Restricted value. Restricted value. So for non-commercial vehicle, we've said that these are vehicles that are used to support what? operations within our business. They are not used entirely to generate income directly, but just to support what? To support operations, okay? So at this point, we are talking of the concept of restricted value for non-commercial vehicle. So restricted value, we normally tend to cope on purchase. Mm -hmm. So under that, maybe just for the purpose of our notes, we can just mention and say, we can only say that, uh, on purchase, on purchase, on purchase, on purchase, non-commercial vehicles are restricted to 3 million. On purchase, 
non-commercial vehicles are restricted to three million. I know you guys maybe maybe you read the notes of two million, probably high chance. But remember, as per the new amendments, you are saying that the non-commercial vehicles are restricted to three million. Non-commercial vehicles are restricted to three million. They are restricted to three million. That is on purchase. Mm -hmm. Then, on disposal of non-commercial vehicle, on disposal of non-commercial vehicle, if it was restricted on purchase, therefore, at this point, we also have to consider it. We also have to consider it in terms of in terms of disposal. In terms of disposal. So, on disposal of non-commercial vehicle. We have to determine our disposal value. We have to determine our disposal value. We have to determine our disposal value. So to determine our disposal value, we are going to take our sales proceeds, sales proceeds. We divide by the original cost. We divide by the original cost times the restricted value times the restricted value. So that is to say, on purchase, we restrict this to 3 million. On disposal, we have to determine our disposal value. And in determining our disposal value, we are talking of our sales proceeds. We divide by our original cost times restricted value, times restricted value. Very important, very important that you understand that. Very important that you should be able to understand that. Uh huh. Uh huh. Assuming in this case, my good students, you have purchased a non commercial vehicle, saloon car. We normally refer to this as a non commercial vehicle many a times. You have purchased saloon car at 5 million. You have purchased saloon car at 5 million. So that is to say, on recording the purchase of this asset, we are going to have what? 3 million. But when you are disposing this asset, you'd be talking of what? Assuming the sales process, assuming the sales value, sales value, maybe you had, say, like uh, 1.5, or maybe say you had, like, uh, say, like, uh, you had, say, like, uh, 1.5, for example. Right? Say you had 1.5. So in this event, uh, for you to dispose it, or rather you can have, let us give it a higher value, say 2.5. So on disposing this item, you'll be having your disposal value, the one that you're going to record in your WTA schedule, you should be looking at it. We are going to talk of 2.5 disposal or the sales proceeds. You divide by the original cost, which was 5 million here. You multiply by the restricted value, which is 3 million. So this will give you your disposal value. This will give you your disposal value. This will give you a disposal value. This will give you a disposal value. So that's how a main important concept here under what? Under the non-commercial vehicles. That is under class A. That is class A, class A, class A. Uh-huh. So that is what you need to know. That is what you need to have in mind. Any question? Any question? Any question? Any question? Okay. So then that should take us to class B. That should take us to class B. Remember that case you're looking at NB under class A. So that should take us to class B. Excuse me, sir. Yes, please. Uh, perhaps we are uh, to consider a staff van. Is it under commercial or non-commercial? Staff Good. one. Staff one. Staff one is under basically non-commercial. Okay. Yeah, staff one basically is a, is a, is a non-commercial, but what if you're having delivery van? Delivery van That's now commercial. is commercial. Yeah. Is that okay, Pedina? Thank, thank you, thank you. Great. So that is our what we have. Now, class B, again, talk of uh, basically characteristics. 
It's very important to understand the characteristics of class B. So class B is simple. In this case, I normally term this as a dust bin class. This is a dust bin. Dust bin, dust bin. <laughs> you might wonder why, why are you terming that class as a dust bin. This is the reason. You'll find that uh, all other items which don't have characteristics of class A, weka wapi, class B. All other items which they don't have characteristics of class A, weka wapi, put them here under class B, including situation where you are given machineries and you're not dealing with a manufacturing farm. I'm going to repeat that, right? Including situations where you are given machineries and you are not dealing with a manufacturing farm. Iso machineries, ata kama umepewa weighing machine, ata kama umepewa iso aspect of uh, whichever machine that you are given. So long as you are not dealing with a manufacturing farm, iso items zote weka hapa, dustbin. So dustbin literally, we'll be talking of items such as what? In an office, you're having carpets. You put it there. In that office, you're having furniture. You put it there. In that office, you're having curtains. Wake up early. In that office, we'll be talking of partitions. Wake up early. In that office, any, anything, anything that does not have characteristic of class A, wake up class B, and all other machineries that we'll be having, which are not part of my, which are not part of manufacturing, or even if they are part of manufacturing and you're not dealing with manufacturing farm, all those items work a wapi, work a class B. That's the reason why Morimo and Aita dust me. That's the reason why Morimo and Aita need dust me. I know you might be like, ah, Morimo, why are you terming this as a dust me class? That's the reason why I normally term this class as a dust me class. All item, Izo taka taka zote zenye, aziko hapa kwa class A. Iso item, or rather you're dealing with a farm that is not manufacturing and you're having machinery. All these items place them in class B. All these items place them in class B. And remember, we've said that class B, basically, we are talking of what? We are talking of class B as at the rate of 10%. Class B is at the rate of 10%. Class B is at the rate of 10%. So we are agreeing that for the purpose of capital allowances, ideally, we'll all be talking of what? Only two classes. That is for WTA. WTA, we only have two classes now. That is class A and class B. Very important to note, class A and class B. Very important to note. So uh, once we have that in mind, then we can look at some of these uh, important terms that are also very ideal here. There are these concepts in uh, capital allowance more so under WTA. More, maybe before you look at the schedule, before you look at the WTA schedule, there are these items that I want us to have in mind. So in B, these items that I want us to have in mind, they are literally like uh, four items, right? We normally tend to talk of the concept referred to as a uh, trading. Uh, that is, of course, a uh, trading receipt. Trading receipt. And uh, trading loss. We have balancing charge and uh, balancing deduction. Balancing charge and balancing deduction. Balancing charge and balancing deduction. Balancing charge and balancing deduction. So we're having these items here in uh, basically uh, WTA, trading receipt and trading loss. Balancing charge and balancing deduction, right? So we start with the first one, trading receipt. And I think uh, I think this question was uh, tested. I think this question was tested last year. I'm going Just a moment. I think this question was tested. Actually, it's good that it has come up. Uh, that was uh, uh huh. Let me check. That's why I also I always say that uh, theory theories are also very yeah exactly. You see, if you check, if you check last sitting, last sitting they tested this bit. 
if you check class seating uh, question number five, if you test, uh, if you check class seating question number five, this is what you are given. You see, this is what you are given. Question number five, class seating, trading receipt and balancing deduction. Trading receipt and balancing deduction. That is what that's what we are talking about. You see, balancing. Uh, that is a uh, now you are asked trading receipt and balancing deduction. This was tested last week, and that's why I was insisting. Remember when we started, I mentioned that it is very important, guys. It is very, very important that you learn how to balance, right? You learn how to balance the theory and computation. It will take you to places you never be, you never seen before. So this is simple. Trading receipt, take for example this case. Don't write first of all. I want you to understand this concept first of all. Don't write. Understand this concept first. At this point, I am having items in class A, for example. Okay? I'm having items in class A. Don't try it. First of all, understand. First of all, understand. I'm having these items in class A. So that at this time, probably my book value, my book value here, the written down value of these items, that is, of course, the uh, aspect of a balance put down plus all the additions. Assuming I'm talking of, uh, say, uh, 2 million. I don't know why today I've used 2 million a lot. Assuming I'm having a value of 2 million. Then here comes, you dispose all the assets. You're disposing all the assets. So you dispose all the assets. So that the disposal value, disposal value here, you're disposing all, all the assets, okay? You dispose all these assets at how much? Three million. Dispose all these assets at three million. My question would be, in this case, my question would be, favor. Are we making a loss or are we making a profit in this case? Favor? Region on value is two million. You are disposing your assets at three million. Are you making a loss or are you making a profit? Favor. Making a profit. You're making a profit, right? A profit of how much? One million. One million. That is good. Very good. So we agree that in this scenario, I am disposing all the assets, all the assets in this class A, and I'm making a profit of one million. So this is what I want you to understand. If my business is ceasing, if we are closing down this business completely, or rather let us start with if our business is ongoing, right? I'm disposing all these assets and the business is still in operation. In this sense, I'm going to have what you're referring to as trading receipt. Get this concept well. I am disposing all the assets in class A. And my business is still in operation. My business is still in operation. So what you are going to have, we are saying, we are going to have what you are referring to as trading receipt. What if the same case happen? What if the same case happen and we are closing down our business? I am disposing all our assets and we are closing down our business. And I'm having this situation. At that point, I'm going to have what you're referring to as what? Balancing charge. At that point, I'm going to have what, what, what you're telling me as balancing charge. I'm repeating again. You're disposing all your assets and you are generating a profit. And your business is still in operation. In that event, we'll be having what we're referring to as trading receipt. In the event that I'm disposing all our assets in a particular class at a profit, and our business is closing, our business is seizing, I'll be having what I'm referring to as what? Balancing charge. The opposite will be loss and deduction. In this scenario, maybe I'm having the same case. My retained value is 2 million but our disposal value is 1 million. You'll find that I'll be having what? I'll be having a loss. So in this event, 
when I am disposing all our assets at a loss and our business is still in operation, I'm going to have what we're referring to as trading loss. But if I am disposing all our assets and our business is seizing and I'm disposing them at a loss, therefore I'll be having what you're referring to as what? As balancing deduction. So write in your own words, there you've understood the difference between trading receipt and trading loss and balancing charge and balancing deduction. That one I'm not giving you what to write. Now, write it in your books the way you have understood that. Write it in your books the way you've understood that. And literally, we have answered that question that was tested last sitting. We have answered that question that was tested last sitting. In that case, by that concept, by that scenario, I've given you the idea and the concept. Now, write it the way you have understood it in your book. So uh, in this case, I've seen time has really gone. Uh, we need to have uh, FM. So what, uh, what, uh, what you are going to do, literally at this point, I've given you guys like 80% of now the capital allowance, 80%, almost 85%. So tomorrow, we are going to have a look at our the new WTA schedule. I know you guys, you are used to the one of uh, class, class A, class 1, class 2, class 3. No, we don't use that anymore, right? I'm going to give you a clue. I'm going to give you a very simple strategy on how to prepare your wear and tear allowance so that whenever you're having that in an exam situation, you prepare it within not less than 10 minutes, you're true. So you're going to look at our WTA schedule uh, tomorrow. Plus, we do that question in our model paper. We do that question on model paper. Remember the question on model paper, you are required to prepare the wear and tear allowance, not wear and tear allowance, but ideally the whole capital allowance. Plus, you prepare your aspect of what taxable income. You determine your taxable income. If you can see this question very well, it was a, it was a very good question and it will open our eyes and mind very, very well. See, like, uh, or is that question of ours? Let me let me show you so that uh, you have an idea of what we'll be handling. You see this part, this question of ours of uh, that is question number eight, block paper, block model paper. Other than just us determining our capital allowance, I'm having this concept of absorption of interest. Absorption of interest in our capital allowance. Absorption of interest in our capital allowance, very important. Then I'm also having, then I'm also having, you're not only told to prepare capital allowance, but rather you're supposed to prepare what? Taxable profit. So these are very ideal questions that uh, if at all you can handle and understand this question, I'm not sure if there's any question for capital allowance that you can't handle. That one I'm very, very sure. If at all you can handle that part, and you handle basically understand it very very clearly there's no question for capital allowance which you can't handle there's no question for capital allowance which you can't handle so i think uh, let us pick it up from uh, there tomorrow not unless anyone has a question any question any question guys any question uh -huh. Excuse me, sir. Yes, please. I, I wanted to confirm concerning uh -huh. the the investment deduction. Yes, you said please. that if an item in belongs to IBD and it is given as part of ID, when you deduct it, deduct it, you should not use it anywhere. I understand this very very well. Not all mm -hmm. items for IBD. We mentioned non-qualifying items non qualifying items we only have four these are talk of showroom talk of admin block talk of retail shop and the aspect of dwelling place so if these items are included in the cost of the factory building and you have conducted your 10 percent test you have realized that the cost of these items are more than the 10% of the entire factory building. You are going to deduct it in your factory building, but they are not going to appear 
anywhere else. That's the first scenario. The second scenario, these items you might be given separately, not included in the factory building, but rather constructed separately. So if they are constructed separately, then they will qualify for IBD. Then they will qualify for IBD. Is that now okay? Yes, thank you. Great, great. Any other question? There's someone who was asking a question, I think. Okay, guys, so if you don't have any other question, watch out to see where you can your financial management here, right? Watch out here to Shugulukie, these students for financial management. So you guys, uh, you have a nice time. See you tomorrow. Then as we'll be clearing that question for...